What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today we'll be doing a full in-depth review on the first Dyson to ever hit U.S. shores. This is the Dyson DC-07 machine. Now this machine came in a ton of different variants, colorways, with various different names attached to it after the DC-07 moniker, but today we'll be focusing on the most common version, the DC-07 all floors. There's also the DC-07 Animal, which is the second most common, and various other color schemes and exclusive models that exist afterwards. For all intents and purposes, this review will apply to every single one of those machines, as the only difference between all of them except for one is the color and the included extra accessories. There's only one vacuum in the DC-07 lineup that does not quite fit that moniker, and that machine will be reviewed later. That's the DC-07 carpet. But for every single one of the DC-07s that we got here in the States, besides that one very limited unit that have the fitted clutch mechanism, this review will be applicable to all of those machines. So, this is the first Dyson that ever hit U.S. shores, and it's also Dyson's first mach machine to feature their Route 8 Cyclone technology. Now, there's a whole backstory as to why the first Dyson that showed up in the States is the seventh model, and why none of the dual cyclonic Dysons came to the States. That's because of a whole agreement with Phantom and all that sort of stuff. We'll talk about that later. But for now, we're focusing on the DC-07, as it is the first machine to show up here in the U.S. And this review is very fitting, because these machines in October of this year will turn 21 years old, at least for the earliest ones here in the States, as this machine hit U.S. shores in October of 2002. So, some of these will be old enough to drink soon, and I think the question is, well, are they going to need a drink after all their years of service? Are they holding themselves up just fine, or is some of them maybe on the verge of needing retirement? Let's find out in this full review, of course. Those details will depend on your specific machine, but I'll discuss the general conditions and what may justify doing or doing not as far as replacing one of these machines. That I worded that really weird, but you know what I'm trying to say. So, starting off with this machine, we'll do a super basic overview, although this machine will not, or this video will not be the maintenance tutorial, so I'm not going to go in-depth as far as filters and cleaning the brush roll and emptying the bin and all that stuff. I'll still talk about that stuff very briefly, but there will be a separate video on how to maintain your Dyson DC-07, with the only exception being the clutch mechanism. That will come later as well, if I ever decide to do that video. There's plenty of other videos that are good. But if I do that, that'll be separate as well. So, for now, this is the DC-07. So, as I mentioned, it was released in 2002 here in the States. It was released in 2001 abroad. The UK got this machine about a year before we did. And there were a couple of these machines that released in the UK that were made in the UK. But right, right when this machine released was when they were in the process of moving their factory to Malaysia. So every single one of the DC-07s that you see in the U.S., were made in Malaysia. There's not going to be a single UK DC-07, even the earliest ones from the UK. All these machines are made in Malaysia. So, starting off, we've got the main machine. So, when you're using it, you put your foot on the front to recline it back, just like that, and you push it up to go back up into the upright position. Pretty self-explanatory. Now, right here on the side of the machine, there's a small little foot switch, which we'll zoom in on just so you can see it. Really zoom in on that and give it a second to focus. Come on camera, focus. Okay, so there's a small little dial right here. And this is a selector that will allow you to select between bare floors and carpets. If I tilt this forward, you can see exactly what I mean. So on carpets and on bare floors. So you can pull this up with your foot to go to bare floors or push it down to go to carpets. And when the machine is in the upright position, this machine will always turn off the brush roll whenever the machine is upright. So when it's parked upright in this position to use the hose or just to park it to move a piece of furniture, the brush roll will always be off, at least assuming your clutch is functioning correctly. Now, this little shape right here is the exact shape of the clutch mechanism that's inside. It's a physical clutch mechanism that's run by gears. And this little switch will actually physically close and open the gears for each of these two belts. There's a belt that goes from the motor to the clutch, and a belt that goes from the clutch to the brush roll. So, that, that clutch mechanism is rather finicky on these machines, and one thing the Dysons are well known and famous for is that if you get this clutch jammed when it's in the carpet mode, it'll make a very, 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 very loud buzzing ratchety noise. 
It'll scare the absolute bejesus out of you, and you'll definitely not mistake it for anything else. That is the sound of the clutch jamming, and if you get that noise, turn off your machine. Maybe take, give yourself maybe 10 seconds as a breather to come down from the panic attack you just had, and then make sure there's nothing jammed in the brush. Sometimes it'll also happen if you run over a rug or just some sort of material that the Dyson just does not like. Because any lightweight rugs, this machine doesn't really like, and it will try to eat them. Uh, maybe not eat them, it's not going to successfully eat them like some other machines, but it's not going to like it. So definitely be careful with what types of carpets you use this on. Any standard carpeting will do, just anything that's super shaggy, these a lot of times don't like to deal with, but there are some exceptions. It really depends on how the fiber is laid, because I've seen these successfully vacuum some really thick pile carpets before, and then other times just struggle with them at all. So it really just depends on your type of carpeting, whether or not th this machine likes it. And if it makes that noise, you're just going to have to vacuum with it on the bare floor mode. It's not going to clean as well, but at least you'll be able to get it somewhat clean. But realistically, there are some rugs out there that a lot of people try to buy that no vacuum can really cope with. So it is worth mentioning that there are some rugs out there that just straight up can't be vacuumed by pretty much anything with the, remo with the revolving brush. So that tends to be a problem that many people run into as some shag carpeting is kind of coming back into fashion. But a lot of it's really difficult to clean. And this machine wasn't really designed for it. So... As I mentioned, there's that whole clutch mechanism, and I think I explained it pretty thoroughly as far as that goes. So, bare floors gets you to bare floors, and carpet gets you to carpet. Now, this little floor head right here will actually pivot up and down to adjust to your floors. If for whatever reason this floor head is not bouncing up like this to where it hides this message that some models have, if your floor head isn't doing this when you pull it up, then it might not be adjusting to your floor properly. And the reason why is there's a small hose that's right in here that actually functions as the spring of the vacuum. And because this hose is supposed to be stiff, it's supposed to essentially push the actual head up like this. And that's how it maintains contact with the carpet. There's no physical springs in here. This hose on this one side is your spring. So if this, this hose is really soft and not stiff anymore, then it's not going to adjust properly. Now, you can try flipping the hose around and reinstalling it in the opposite direction. Sometimes that works, but if the hose is really old, as you can see, I did that on this machine, and after two weeks, it's already kind of lost its tension. So if that's the case, you're going to want to buy a new hose. It's supposed to be springy like this. And if you're wondering, if you need one of these hoses, part number's right there. That'll be in the maintenance video as well. So if you lost that, don't worry about that. Now, if your hose is like this and you need to do some cleaning, yeah, that will definitely hurt hurt your ability to clean. And I've seen that a lot with YouTube videos where people have their DC-07s and DC-14s and they're wondering why their machine just isn't picking up well. Even from people that have had these for a number of years, they're wondering why their machine is all of a sudden not doing it. A lot of times that's the problem because you'll see videos of these and you'll be able to tell that it's raised up. And I can kind of give you an example of it right here. So right here is a pretty extreme example of what I'm talking about. I'm kind of propping the machine up with my foot. So if the, ho if the hose is not pushing the actual base plate down like this, this is what it's supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be pushing it down. So if it's not doing that and it's stuck up like this, then you can see there's a gap and it's not going to be able to clean that carpet. So if you're vacuuming and you notice that it's not making contact and you obviously can't have a hose right now, maybe you bought one but it hasn't arrived yet and you still need to clean, just step on the front, give it a light little push, and it'll push it down and adjust. And just monitor it, make sure you're not moving the handle all the way up and down, because if you're moving the handle a lot, as you can see, it can lift up a little bit and then you have to push it back down. So definitely pay attention to that, because if this is not flush, it's not gonna be making contact. And the way that you keep that flush is by making sure that hose is stiff like it should be. While we're down in this section, I can go ahead and show you one of the other things I really like about the, D the DC-07 platform. It's the fact that this entire machine can come completely to bits without hardly any tools. The only tools you really need to do basic maintenance on this thing is, at worst, a single quarter. And you see what I mean in a sec. So, things like this little airway pipe are able to just easily pop out without any tools. You can pop the bin off by pressing this little button right up here. The bin empties with this little trigger right here. Make sure it's over a trash can, so I'm obviously not going to do that right now. But just 
pull that and this little flap falls down and you can also once the flap is open you can press this button to pull the actual bin off and remove anything that's lodged in between these two pieces and reassemble it it's pretty easy and i'll go over that more more in detail in the maintenance video then if you get anything stuck in here you can just push something down in there like a coat hanger and push it out that pops right back on two clicks easy to go then right down here you got the u-bend this is pretty simple so you can just grab this boop, and pop it right out for whatever reason people feel the need to vacuum up pencils and they always get stuck right in here so dyson calls this a u-bend i call this the pencil catcher and that just slides right back up and clicks into place you've got our wand right here pops off with this button just like that we've got a wand capped one cap right up here and a hose right over here. Now, unfortunately, the button on this particular hose is broken, but normally when you pull this down, it'll lock in right where this groove is. So there's a little groove right here, right here, and normally this hose would lock in right there. And when it locks in, you can push this button to either slide it back up or to remove it entirely. And there's a cool little feature with that that I'll show you later. But if you get anything stuck in your hose, you can pop that out and replace it very easy, which is good because we're going to have to replace it later since the button on this particular one is broken. And that just pops right in, just like that. So, the tools, which we'll mention later, actually we'll just mention them right now, all fit onto the end of the hose. So, we've got a dusting brush and upholstery tool, also known as a stair tool, which is this piece. And we've got a crevice tool that stores right on the back of the wand. So, the crevice tool is really interesting because unlike a lot of other crevice tools, it has these little airway holes that allow air and airflow to escape. Which is good because it means that if you're trying to vacuum anything that's delicate like drapes, instead of it all getting sucked into the tool, it actually allows some air to pass through so you can effectively clean without the really serious amount of suction this thing has actually getting in the way. Which is very important because Dyson has seemed to forgot this philosophy because they've removed these holes or made them so small they're not effective on their newest machines while also unnecessarily increasing the suction. Which makes the tools a lot harder to use and a lot more likely to just get stuck to things and not necessarily aid at all in cleaning performance. Now Dyson could very easily solve that on their new units by adding a little collar that twists and allows you to adjust the suction right at the inlet for the bin. But for some reason, they refuse to do that. But on these DC-07s, it's not as big of a deal because the suction isn't as, you know, offensively strong. And you also have these attachments that have little bits of airflow holes in them. At least in the case of the upholstery tool and the crevice tool. Although if you buy aftermarket tools, those may not have these grooves in them as you know they might not care they might be a bit more generic so keep that in mind if you have genuine dyson tools they'll have these features and they're really nice so now that we're on the subject of tools we can talk about all three of the dyson tools that come on board with the dc07 and we'll also touch on some of the extra tools that you can get for these machines as well at least the most common ones so starting off with the ones that you get i already mentioned the crevice tool it's great not much else to complain about the upholstery tool is pretty decent. Now, on this particular example, the felt pads that are used to help get up pet hair are missing from this unit. And if yours has those pads, I confirmed with both types as I have one of each, those definitely do work better. But it might not be enough to worry warrant replacing your tool if these pads have fallen off. But it is something to keep in mind. These pads do sometimes fall off. And if they do, well, they don't really aid in much. It's just a straight suction tool at that point. So... This does pretty decent at getting a pet hair, although when I used one of these that I have on one of my other DC-07s that have the little red strips, that does a little bit better. So definitely is pretty decent tool, and it also rotates. By default, it's going to be like this, about a 45 degree angle, but I personally choose to almost always use it at this 90, uh, well actually that looks more like a 45 degree angle, whatever. So this straight angle is the way I prefer to use it, but by default it's going to be like this. So it really just depends on personal preference. You can even use it like this if you wanted to, for some reason. But yeah, because it swivels all like that, and it's a pretty decent tool. 
and next the dusting brush. Now I mostly use it like this when I'm actually dusting. The bristles are nice and soft and it's much better than the dusting brushes that are on the, just other vacuums in general, including newer Dysons. These being separate tools compared to the newer Dysons is definitely much nicer and they work a lot more effectively, especially the crevice tool. But this dusting brush is still pretty solid. Some stuff likes to get trapped in here, but it's all plastic and there's nothing stopping you from washing any of these. In fact, I recommend that because these are the things that get the brunt of a lot of the dirt you're vacuuming up and that gets gross. Now this you can also twist to a 100, 100 degree angle? 180 degree angle? I forgot what you call this. And you can use this for if you want to actually get cobwebs and stuff that's in actual corners. So this works really good for that too. Now, it's important to note that the Dyson has an inch and a quarter fitting, but there's a bit of a caveat to that. So on the Dyson hose, all of the attachments fit on the inside of the hose, like this. So when you're putting an attachment on your hose, you're actually putting the attachment in the hose. I'll demonstrate that with the crevice tool since it won't swivel and fight me. As you can see right there, they're just friction fit right onto the end of both the hose and the wand, which I'm a big fan of friction fit because it means there's no catches to break. Although, to be fair, I've never had one of the catches break on one of the newer Dysons. I do still prefer this method. So, as, I, as you can see, on the hose, the tools fit inside. But on the wand, no matter which end you put them on, the tools fit over the wand. And we'll talk about the wand in a sec. What that means is that it means that while standard inch and a quarter attachments can fit on both ends of the wand, because it fits right on, because they fit in the tool, a lot of inch and a quarter attachments are, aren't, are either slightly too thick or slightly not thick enough to grip on the inside of this hose, so a lot of them don't fit properly. Some of them do, some of them don't, it just depends. Now, you can get a little tiny extension that will fit inside the hose and inside one of these attachments that will then make your standard inch and a quarter attachments work. So those are definitely an option. But if you want to use your own attachments that aren't from Dyson, well, this is definitely the friendliest compared to the newer Dysons. It's also not as straightforward when it comes to the hose, whereas with the newer Dysons, you just use an adapter for everything. So it, you know, in some ways is easier and in some ways is harder. Now, one other feature that was really, really liked by a lot of people who have DC-07s is the reversible wand. Now, they call it the reversible wand because the wand is reversible. Who would have thunk it, right? So, by default, when you pull the wand out of the machine, of course, you store the wand with this button snapped onto the machine. So, as you're pulling the hose out, it'll click in right here. Of course, on mine, the button's broken, but... I'll fix that later. So by default, it'll lock in right at this point. And so with a lot of the older Dysons, as well as the Phantoms, you would then just put your attachment right on the end of the wand, just right where that is. And this is definitely the much quicker way of doing it, because you can just slap the attachment on before you remove the wand, pull this down until it clicks right here, and then once it clicks right here, you can get to cleaning. So it's pretty self-explanatory, and there's no handle right here, but it's decent enough to grip and it locks in enough that it's pretty secure. So that's definitely a fine feature, but one thing they introduced is there were some customers that complained about this and thought, this is stupid, why am I cleaning with the handle end? So Dyson said, I bet. And what they did is they allowed you to press this button to unlock this and pull this right off. Now you can, guess, guess who? You can reverse the wand. So now, when you flip your wand cap out of the way, or you don't really flip it, you kind of just push it out of the way. Now you can attach the hose to the end of the handle right here. It'll click into place, at least assuming yours isn't broken like mine is. It'll click into place. And now you've got the actual handle from when you were using the machine. So you've got the same handle that you use when you're vacuuming, but now you have it for whenever you're using the wand. So when you're using any of your attachments, so if you're getting up into your corners, that works. If you're doing your stairs and you're one of those weirdos who likes to have a wand when you're cleaning your stairs so that way it's harder to clean them, you've got that. And even more importantly, if you want to actually clean your bare floors with a proper bare floor tool, you can do that. And I can put this on the rug mode. And now it's like almost like a canister. So if you're wanting to vacuum the bare floors with your DC07, if you got the low reach floor tool, 
or do rugs, as you can see here, then it actually works very well because it's basically just like having a canister. You've got a legit handle and you've got a hose. It's a stretch hose, unlike most canisters. But hey, when you're doing bare floors, that works very well because while this machine does have a brush roller shut off for bare floors, you'll see in a second, whenever we do the pickup test, why this isn't my favorite machine for bare floors. And once you're done with that, you just pop whatever tool you're using right off, set that aside, pop this out, and then, well, this is gonna be kinda hard to demonstrate with one hand. Now you're gonna take your hose, slide the wand in there. Again, it would normally click right here, but you then just push that button and push that in. Then you're going to hold the hose you're going to hold the hose as you slide the metal wand in and you're going to push it down until it clicks into place. Just like that. Then you can flip down the wand cap and put all of your tools away. Now if you're wondering where the tools go, ah, oh, this broken tripod. When you're looking at the back of the machine from left to right, the dusting brush goes in this slot right here. Crevice tool goes right underneath the handle right here. And the upholstery tool goes right in like this. Just like that. And one other thing that's kind of nice about the DC-07 that most people don't talk about when you compare it to its slightly younger brother, the DC-14, is that all the attachments store on the machine, which means when you go to empty the bin, you don't have to worry about dropping an attachment in the trash by accident. And also, because these machines just clip into the sides, you actually can store these tools in the orientation you normally use. So for me, I use the upholstery tool always at this angle, so I could store it straight up like that. And for the dusting brush, same story. If I want to store it straight sticking out, I can. And technically, you don't even have to put it in that direction. You can put this over here, and if you're a wild child, you put that in just like that. I don't know why you do that, but you can. If your heart desires it, go for it. While we're on the subject of attachments, we'll mention one more of the extra accessories that you could get that didn't ride on board the machine, and it's the only other accessory that you would get if you purchased the DC-07 Animal, and that's the Turbo Brush. Technically, there's two different versions, but we'll, we'll start off by focusing with this version because this is the version that came with the vast majority of DC-07s at least back when they were still the current model. So this is a DC-07 Turbo Brush, but this is actually made by Wesselwerk. Uh, they're a pretty well-known company that makes a lot of German components and accessories for companies like Sibo and Miele, etc. And they also make a lot of their own stuff in-house as well. So they make a lot of good, high-quality attachments. And this particular Turbo Brush is no exception. This is actually the cheapest Wesselwerk Turbo that you can physically find. And since it is technically still inch and a quarter, you can use this on a lot of other stuff too, despite the Dyson branding. So if you want one of these turbos, this Dyson version is actually the easiest way to get it. And you can adapt it to your Sibo Mila or whatever other machine you want to use that can somehow either natively or with an adapter fit inch and a quarter. So this is a really decent turbo brush. One thing I like about it is the bristles are actually very, very nice. Um, they are quite soft but there, there is a good chunk of them. There definitely is more than of the Dyson version that came later. And it's also easy to service too, which is really nice. Just line this up, push this button, pull it out, and you can pop this open and clean it as needed. I actually have two of these, but the only problem that I found with this is while this is pretty effective, on my particular couch, I find it tends to bog down a lot. And that's definitely not a problem that I've noticed exclusively with this turbo tool but I have to apply only a very light pressure to it or less, otherwise it bogs down and comes to a complete stop. Which ironically, despite this turbo brush being a slightly worse attachment overall in terms of actual cleaning performance and the ability to get a pet hair, I found this one doesn't bog down as much. Could it be because of its lack of bristles? Could it be that you control the airflow with this little suction cup? I don't really know. But this is the secondary version these came with. It was called the Mini Turbine Net, which is a bit of a goofy name because this thing is huge. But 
Most of this tool mainly debuted with the DC-14, and it also has a fitting right here to fit a lot of the Dyson canisters like the DC-11. So if you're wondering what that's for, that's what that's for. There's also a DC-15 adapter that uses this button as well. So this button is not used on the DC-07, so you can just ignore this button. But this button right here allows you to turn the brush roll on and off. Why you'd want to turn the brush roll off on a turbo, I don't know. That's kind of the whole point of using it. But hey, it's an option. It doesn't hurt. Although clearly Dyson felt it was superfluous because they removed those on the newer units. It is also worth noting that both of these turbos are not very good. <laughs> I know people will kind of complain about me saying this one's not very good. Again, it cleans fine. It just bogs down with the DC-07. And at the end of the day, this one works better with the DC-07, but this one also, see, you can kind of see the dilemma here. This one stops lefts often, so this one is able to keep working for longer, but when this one is working, it cleans better. So, I guess just get whichever one you prefer at that point. Now, me personally, I still prefer this one because I can just push a little bit more lightly and it's a lot more effective. Whereas this one, I'll often have to fight with it multiple times because there just straight up isn't enough bristles. If there was more bristles on this, then I'd like it a lot more because I'll find pet hair in the spots where there isn't any bristles, so then it's not gonna clean it. So then I have to move it like side to side in a really goofy fashion to get it to work. So, I don't know. Now, again, I'll talk more about these in an own separate video where I do on all the Dyson attachments, but I pretty much said everything there is to say about both of these already. So if you have a DC-07 and you're wondering which one of these two turbos to get, just get whichever one your 7 came with. If it didn't come with either, then, I don't know, take your pick. Do you want purple or do you want gray? Probably depends on your couch which one works better. So as we can see, we're currently looking at the business end of the DC-07. Now, this particular machine I did fit with a brand new clutch assembly prior to doing this review, so my comments on its performance will be in an absolute ideal control environment, while also using this in a proper domestic and commercial setting. I tested this machine both domestically and commercially, on and off for the last two weeks, if not three weeks actually. And this particular machine has been doing pretty decent as far as... The, the performance. It's actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. And I speculate that it's actually better than the DC-33, which doesn't make a lot of sense because they're basically the same design. But I did notice this machine does appear to clean a little bit better, but it, to be fair, it's been a while since I've used one of the DC-33s. So right here on the base plate, we can see we can actually access the base plate and pop it off with just a quarter. Just a quarter turn, gets you all these, and lets you lift this off and get better access to the brush roll to clean off hair which is important because they'll have to do that a lot. Now, I have the longest hair out of everybody in my household. My hair goes down to my shoulders. And for most other vacuums, my hair is not a problem. And in fact, usually it's very little a problem. If there's any hair on the brush roll, it's usually very little. But this particular machine, just for some reason, this brush roll is just a magnet for hair. And every little bit of hair, every little strand of hair that gets vacuumed up, gets stuck on this brush roll. I noticed there's like no hair in the bin. And I wondered, I was like, why is there like no hair in the bin? I thought, oh, is this machine just not good at picking up hair? No, it's great at picking up hair. It just doesn't put it in the bin. It just leaves it on the brush. So this machine is one of the worst that I've seen as far as hair that tangles up on the brush. Now the good news is that this brush bar, and Dyson specifically calls it a brush bar because if you noticed, it doesn't really roll. It's more so a flat brush that was kind of twisted so it's a very flat design and the only thing that's round on it is the actual pole in the center that connects each end so it's a very flat design which is good because it means that you can easily fit a pair of scissors in here and cut off all the hair or there's even enough clearance where you can just grab it with your fingers and yank it all out which is definitely possible so it is easy easy to keep this maintained but the fact that you have to do it as often as you do to keep this brush roll free of hair is quite the hassle. So that's a bit of a complaint, but if you've been dealing with it for this long, then it probably doesn't phase you. And if it really bothers you, then hey, upgrade to the new Ball Animal 3, because the Ball Animal, uh, Animal 3 doesn't tangle with any hair at all. So they've definitely made great strides in that regard, but even with how old this machine is before anti-tangle is really a thing, this definitely is at least easy to clean, 
But it's a di it's a bit disappointing if you're coming off of a similar dual site a similar cyclonic machine of the time like the Clear Track or the Phantoms, because those machines with their wooden brush rollers tend to not tangle with hair at all, despite no anti tangle technology. So, for whatever reason, this machine struggles with hair and it getting wrapped around the brush, but it's easy enough to at least clean it off with a basic pair of scissors. So, at least there is that. This isn't only that you have to do it. Also, these little wheels right here on the sole plate tend to rust out, but you can buy replacements of these. In fact, it looks like two of these, well, one of these on this sole plate are a little rusted. So, that's not very good. I probably should change these. So, yeah, that's pretty much that as far as the bottom of the machine. All right, so next we've got the official Intellitech Studios pickup test. Now, I've added a little bit of an extra element to my pickup test based on my actual usage of using this machine in my kitchen. Now, I have a cat and a dog, so sometimes their food will get spilled a little bit on the floor, and sometimes, as a pet owner, you may want to pick that stuff up. After all, Dyson has a machine called the Animal, even in this range. So we're going to see how well this machine handles the pet food. Spoiler alert, it's not going to be very good, not nearly as good as the Animal 3. And we've got another little mess behind this that we'll test out the low-reach floor tool on to see if that is a better solution. Now, I will be taking a break between the carpet and the bare floor to shut off the machine and turn the dial to the bare floor mode. You don't want to turn it on while the machine is running as it will put unnecessary wear on the clutch mechanism and the belts. Well, that's interesting. So, as you can see, getting the oatmeal up off of, getting all the debris, in fact, off the carpet was pretty okay. It did snowplow some of the food, though, but it did get the oatmeal and the little bits of powder from the oatmeal, although it did drag some of it back onto the carpet from the bare floor section. Now, the animal food, of course, did cause it to not be able to get some of the particulates that was in front of it. So, as a result, a lot of that got snow plowed. Then I tried to do what I had actually done in real life in my kitchen, which is pull the machine back so the head can lift up a little bit and allow it to sit on top of the debris. That was partially effective, but not really enough. So. Now granted, this was also way more of a pile than it otherwise would be in a real home. In fact, in my real home. So it's a bit of a torture test, and it's not exactly representative. This is why pickup tests should not be taken as gospel, because they're not necessarily representative. But, now we're going to try it again, this time with the Dyson's Low Reach 4 tool, to see what differences there are in its ability to get everything. All right, the floor tool set up. We'll go ahead and do this.
So, as we can see, it did very much stick down to the floor. Actually, I just noticed something. So even though I switched it over, even though I pushed the button to switch it over from the rug mode to the floor mode, I noticed it didn't quite do it. So that might explain why it was sticking to the floor a good amount. Because this tool, a lot of times, doesn't like to adjust when you tell it to. So if I push this button, which, again, it really doesn't want to let me do. There we go. And now... We've actually now we've actually moved now we've actually moved the I really need to buy a new tripod. So now we've actually moved the the base out of the way. And now we actually can access the brushes. So let's see if it does a little bit better now. So when this floor tool actually switches to the mode that you tell it to, it's decently effective. So otherwise it just likes to stick to the floor a lot, but it's still decently effective at picking up the debris. The good news is that if you want to use one of the newer, much more superior Dyson attachments, or your own, there are adapters that exist to allow that to be facilitated. Speaking of which, you can see the bin right here. It's full of all of the dust and dirt that I've sucked up during this entire testing phase for this review. Now I put a clean filter in here, not a brand new one, but I put a clean filter in here and let's see what it looks like. Wow, that's pretty good. So there's a very fine layer of dust. You can see the blue edge. See where it's a bit discolored from the gray dust. But there's not a lot of it. Considering we've filled the bin, not even all the filter is covered. So, now this was about three weeks to a month of usage. Well, I guess anywhere from maybe two to three weeks. I've honestly lost track of how many weeks it's been at this point. It's either anywhere from two weeks to a month, maybe closer to two or three. Probably three. So, that's not bad. Now, I've heard, I've seen some instances of Dysons that supposedly have, like, coarse hair and stuff like that that manages to get onto this filter, or even get through the motor and onto the post-motor filter, which I don't really know how much I buy that, but also, I actually take care of my machines, so that very well could be a factor as well. So, these machines filter very, very well, although, keep in mind, with old, dirty filters, it's not going to be that effective, even though this is a sealed system, so... Keep that in mind. And a lot of dust does eventually collect in the inner cyclones, and that can cause the cyclones to clog up after a number of years if you're vacuuming up a lot of fine dust. And if you have a lot of pet dander, it can cause the cyclone to stink after a while. So if you replace both of these filters and your machine isn't clogged and you still have a pet odor coming from your machine, you might have to take it to a local, local vacuum shop and have them clean out the cyclone assembly. But, other than that, this machine's filtration is still excellent. And Dyson Cyclones have always been very effective at keeping their filters clean. And this is why they, you know, for a while, were the best bagless vacuum. Because every machine that came out at the time, be it from Hoover, Bissell, Eureka, Dirt Devil, a lot of the bagless machines that, people, that these companies are coming out with whenever this machine came out, were not nearly as effective, not even close. They were on a completely different, this machine was on a completely different league back then. And it still holds up today. So filtration, still pretty good. And when you put this filter in, you want to make sure this little guide right here is actually lined up and pushed down flat. Otherwise, you're not making a good seal and you're losing a bit of airflow. I've even seen professionals put this filter in wrong, which is definitely saying something. 
So, I think that's just about it. This is my full, in-depth, long-term review of Dyson's first ever upright here in the States, the DC-07. Now, this machine is very nostalgic to me because my mom bought one of these back in the day in 2006. This is not the exact one, unfortunately. She still has it, and I really hope that if she ever upgrades that she gives me her old one or even lets me buy it off her because that machine is very sentimental to me. That machine's been with her since 2006, other than the brief couple months where she exchanged her first unit at Target. But this machine is very nostalgic for that reason because it introduced me to a lot of modern features. And this machine, just in general, is nostalgic for a lot of people and for good reason. There's a reason why a lot of people enjoyed these machines back then, and many still do to this day, even if their machines might be a little past their prime. So overall, the Dyson DC-07 is definitely a really good machine of its time. While its pickup performance and its carpet deep cleaning ability was certainly not on the highest end, it was about average for what you'd expect. And even though it was a little bit less than what the competition was, the fact that it maintained its performance after an extended period of time was definitely commendable back then. And this machine definitely does hold up as long as you hold up with it on the maintenance. If you change the filters as needed, if you wash the pre-motor filter every six months, change the HEPA filter every two years, change the clutch assembly every two years, and keep the brush roller free of any dust and debris, and replace it if the bristles get worn out, as long as you do that, and just don't overload the cyclone with dust, be nice to it, and don't store it in the sun, because if you do, the plastic will turn yellow and get very brittle, then these machines are capable of lasting a very long time. And I personally serviced some of these that were manufactured in 2002, 2003, and they're still going. So it's definitely a testament to how well at least some of these were built. Of course, some of these are luckier than others, and some of them have gotten really brittle over the years, especially the purple ones. But these yellow ones were almost always pretty solid, unless, like I mentioned, they were stored in the sun or in an area with a lot of UV. Or if you're in a very dry climate, sometimes the hoses will dry rot. But other than that, these are pretty solid. I also should mention that there were some versions of this machine where this handle did not contain a guard right here, which would cause this to fall off if you were carrying the machine and accidentally push the button. And also, the ones that didn't have this guard, these handles were very prone to breaking. So keep that in mind. If yours does not have this extra little guard right here, be careful as this handle is very prone to breaking. You can get replacements for these tops, but they'll usually be grayed out to the neutral color of the machine. In fact, that's a general trend with a lot of these replacement parts is that you're not gonna find colored parts anymore, especially if you have a more obscure model. So if you break one of these pieces, the new part is not going to match unless you get an aftermarket one that happens to be the right color. So that's another little thing to keep in mind. Most people don't care about that, but if you're a collector and you want to keep one of these looking original, then you might have a bit of bad luck there. So anyways, this is the Dyson DC-07. I think I mentioned pretty much all there is to say about it. I guess the last thing I'll mention is it has a 30-foot cord, and that's really good. I mean, that's about it. That's really nothing else to mention. Uh, there's, you know... Again, this machine did wasn't the best cleaner back in the day, but it was very popular, and these were ubiquitous for a reason. They filter really well, despite the fact this machine's close to 18, 20 pounds. It's very easy to push, very easy to pull, very easy to maneuver. The weight is balanced very well. And this machine is, it's not loud, but it's not quiet either. The Definitely the UK versions were louder. And the DC-07 is louder than the newer Dysons because these are the only machines with the Cyclones point up top. And some early versions of the DC-07, the Cyclones actually went a little bit further up in this cassette than later ones, which would cause a little bit more of a noise because there's a little bit more air turbulence in this top section. So that's another thing, is that if you have one of the early Cyclone packs that don't have this guard, they might also be a little bit louder because of the air rushing through this top section. That was fixed with the DC-14. And that's why the DC-14 is so much quieter, despite them having the exact same motor in nearly identical designs outside of the Cyclone pack. So, that's pretty much that. 
This is Intelltech Studio signing out with my full in-depth review of the Dyson DC14 DC07, sorry, half of the DC14. And that's pretty much it. I'm trying to rack my brain to see if there's any other details that I missed or anything, any questions that someone might ask that I could answer. There's not much I can really think about other than as of now, you can still get filters aftermarket. You can still get genuine clutches, although those days are definitely numbered. So if you got one of these and you've been putting off fixing it, do it now. Don't put it off any further. Just bite the bullet and get it fixed. Uh, because truth be told, there really isn't anything like this out there in the market today. Definitely not from Dyson. The DC33 was discontinued in 2018, and there's very few of those left. So... These machines, if you love Dyson but you don't like having a ball, then these machines are still out there. There are still plenty of sellers that are offering these machines reconditioned and refurbished. There's a few on eBay. There's even a few on some other websites as well. So by all means, if you want one of these, you should still be able to find one. And hey, there's nothing wrong with finding one for cheap and re rebuilding it yourself. The clutch mechanism is quite difficult, but the rest of the machine is fairly easy to service. So even for someone who doesn't have much experience, it's definitely a good machine to practice on, at least outside of the clutch. So that's it. This is Intelltech Studio signing out. Before I repeat myself any further, we'll go ahead and cut this review short. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful and found it interesting. If you did, be sure to drop a like on this video. Let me know your thoughts and experiences of the DC-07 below. And that's pretty much that. I will review the DC-07 carpet separately since it deserves its own video. But as far as this, that's about it. After I do this video and after I stop this recording, I will begin the process of completely rebuilding the rest of this machine and offering it up for sale. So if you want this machine, it will be available very soon. Anyways, this is Intelltech Studios signing out. I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you all have a good one. Peace.